Paladins Podcast. Kyle here with... It's Pierre. I'm running this now, Kyle. It's Pierre, Dimitri, and Kyle Lass. Kyle gets his name Lass now. That's right, okay. at the bottom. It's Pierre and Dimitri, and edited by Kyle. Kyle is <laughs> in the background <laughs> editing this. It's moderating. It's like a debate now. We should try an episode like that. And Kyle is the moderator, and you're just asking questions. We should do it in November. Oh, do like a whole political-themed yeah. episode? Who do you think Norman Osborn would be if he was in a political party? That's a good question. It's not because it's so obvious. It's a pretty easy answer. He would be the most likely to introduce crack at the inner city. That's all I'm saying. I just saw Red Goblin. I was like, what is this? It's about Normie Osborn. Do you know about this? Yeah, Normie Osborn takes on the mantle of Red Goblin. And I don't know. I flipped through the pages real quick and I put it back down. I was... And Norman is now the Golden Goblin. He's a good guy. You know what bothered me is the fact that his name's Normie. Don't like it. I'm not following a character that's name is Normie. I've read a decent amount. He is a horrible little nuisance of a child, like always causing problems and getting kidnapped and then like trying to kill people. And now he's evil. Now he's full blown evil. Well, yeah. The last thing I read of him, a little bit of carnage like went into his ear. That's where the Red Goblin came from? Yep. Ever gotcha. since it went in his ear, he's been a real shithead. Mm. They were just like, oh, well, we can't kill him. We had just let him just walk yeah. around like that, right? Killing children's frowned upon, yeah. We're going mm -hmm. to the news now. The news, Comic-Con, the cruise. Tell us about it, Kyle. It's a cruise, and it's, it's a cruise. Comic -Con. And instead of buying a small section in the Javits Center or wherever San Diego is, buy a section on a cruise. I'm guessing you just sit around and sign things while people walk around with alcoholic beverages and flip-flops and, you know? I feel like this is going to get dangerous very quickly. Oh, yeah. There's no way. A bunch of people in costume getting wasted on a cruise. The artist can't leave. Like, these guys just keep coming back. Oh, hey, it's second day. I'm still here. Again, I go to Comic-Cons, but, like, I feel like some of these crazy fans might get a little too much. You think that the guy that sold me a CD who didn't have a Comic-Con badge that one year, do you think he would get into the cruise without a ticket? Do you think he would also sneak into the cruise? I'll go on further. I think the whole ship with everyone Comic-Con related on it is the most likely to get uh, tanked by Somali pirates oh. than any other boat in the oh. sea. Just because of like the bad luck. Come on. Can you imagine the celebrities who are like, yeah, I'll sign up. I'll go. There's got to be like a helicopter or something to get like some of these people off of it. Like Paul Rudd, I'm four or five days. Like he's going to be like, all right, I got to get the fuck out of here. I'm not yeah. signing any more things. I would think it's more like, you know, creators and a ton of panels like in the stadium rooms. Like that's how they would really try and do it because they have like a whole, you know, thing for shows and they have other smaller rooms for like clubs. I would think they would have like the stage be like the big panels for the highest end guests and then everything there'd be little stuff going on with signings and stuff but like the cruise ship rooms are like closets how are you bringing things to get signed like how are you buying things like there'd be nowhere to put anything yeah. and you're bringing paper comics and books and there's swimming pools and water all around you <laughs> like it just doesn't really line up i do think it's going to be really cool everyone in costume just like hanging out on a boat like i feel like it's going to be a crazy party yeah uh, if it's like more like themed around superheroes where it's like you're expected to wear cosplay to every event you're expected to have these like cosplay parties and photo shoots and like yeah but if it's like an actual comic-con like what we like of getting books signed and meeting creators that's a horrible idea can you imagine if ryan stegman was there i'd be like there's only seven restaurants on the ship i'll find you i'm probably gonna buy a ticket being honest here i'm probably gonna go next on the news black widow is the new venom and she She's staying that way. That is what we got in the news right now. They're trying to act like she's going to have a symbiote for a good amount of time. I don't believe it. I think it's a one and done. Just money grab. But it looks cool. You'll see it in the clip below. I'll put it right underneath us. And you can look at it and say, oh, that looks cool. It's a cool symbiote. She'll probably mm -hmm. have it for three issues. So there's Dylan, Black Widow, Eddie Brock. So there's three. Yeah, but Eddie Brock isn't really. No, he's doing stuff. Where's he at now? So the Venom book jumps back and forth to Dylan to Eddie, and Eddie's in space. I'm still catching up. I don't know where he's right now. They really did a Thor job to Venom. I hope Black Widow keeps these powers. I just want her to have something more than just like, I'm a super spy. Also, by the way, it should add to like her stealth, like her powers or stealth. I was thinking like a splinter cell. Jeremiah has a new section that he's added. Hold on, let me just delete it. So the point of <laughs> this new shit. segment, collection, acquisition, exclamation point, to share what we bought. So isn't that what Polar Pass is? No, that's what we read. 
I thought this was full of passwords. This is like when we buy other shit. Okay, collection acquisition. I think we got to work on the name. The collection acquisition, but hey, listen, I I'm with you. I like the idea. All right, so I bought a real book. It is the third book of the second... What comes after trilogy? Like, what's it when it's four books? Foursome. There's a word for it. Anyway, it's the third 4G. book of a four book of the sequel to the original trilogy of Red Rising. So I got a few of those. They're signed. What's Red Rising? Is that like Red Dead Redemption? So Red Rising, a sci-fi epic where a little short red person like me. <laughs> and you're in the mines, right? You're in the mines. All you're right. mining I'm closing shit. my eyes. I'm mining. I have right. rocks in my um, hand. And you're like 15 and you're Ooh, married. That's a little gold. I'm going to put that in my pocket. Right? And then your wife is like, hey, you know, these people who make us mine, like there's a whole world up there. And you're like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no, there's not. And she's like, yeah, there is. I'm going to sing a song. And he's like, no. And then she sings a song. And then the people upstairs that make the mine, they hang her and she dies. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. And then he's like really yeah. mad that his wife got hung. And then they do a lot of plastic surgery and they make him into like a six foot tall gold. Right. He's a gold person now. And then he starts a revolution. So like each class of persons color coded. That sounds racist. That's kind of the point. Like the pink ones are the okay. prostitutes, the blue ones are like the nerds, the gray ones are like the brute, and the gold is like the top. So he goes from being a red to pretending to be a gold and then starts a revolution. What do they do? They painted them? They're not like actually different colors. They have like little symbols on their hands that's color coded. Oh, okay. Some of the prostitutes have like fairy wings and stuff. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Right. So anyway, I guess that's the sixth book has come out. At this mm. point, the main character is like in his 30s and has literally destroyed the whole world. And, you know, there's multiple planets and he's at war and he overthrew the government and they rebelled against him now. So that book just came out and it's really good. I bought a whole bunch of copies. It's great, man. And I have the original trilogy in this like numbered format where all the numbers match. And that first three is worth five grand. Wow. Sure. Pull or pass. I got something. Why you can only talk about what you picked up. You didn't put in the note. Someone just threw this on me. Well, I picked up Something is Killing the Children. We had a comment recently, and I don't know his name. I took it to heart, and I said, you know what? Yeah, no, we will talk about it. I'm not talking about it right now because it's a big book. You heard him. You bought it. Yeah, I was kind of skimming through the pages. I'm actually very excited to like get to this probably after this podcast. So next week, have you guys read it? I don't really like horror books. I really like horror books, I'm finding out. I'm going to mush in these two, although they don't really tie together. I'm just going to go twice is what I'm telling you. So I read Spider-Man number five. Okay. That's obviously a pull being called the definitive Miles Morales run. They're Whoa. saying this is better than Bendis, which uh, I think it might be better than Bendis. I think this is the definitive uh. run. I mean, you still need the old to get a feel, but you could kind of skip everything in between. I mean, it's kind of perfect. So yeah, this kind of wraps up the first arc. I don't want to spoil it, but... The new villain is taken down. Spoil it. Fuck it. Really well done. The art's insane. And yeah. It gets even better. I don't want to spoil much more than that. I think it was only added to the app like last week. So I feel like I have one. I was looking for it, but I couldn't. They might be in a box. Started picking them up. I couldn't wait for the app. Yeah, I have them. I just, I don't know. I really prefer to read everything digitally than holding it in my hands. So the next one is mildly relevant. That's why I'll go again. But Carnage Reigns Alpha has a lot to do with Miles. And I'll just give it a little quick synopsis. Carnage is like taking over this building. I think it's a hotel, actually. So he's killing people. He killed a lot of people. And he's got like this weird like sidekick kind of guy who I don't really know if he showed up somewhere else. So it's like a little confusing. But yeah, Miles goes in and gets pretty fucked up. And then Scorpion is sent in and he pretty much gets fucked up. And yeah, it's cool. Like, and it's definitely tying in to the Miles run to an extent. It's not like a great thing because I hate when it bounces where it's like, okay, I read Miles 5, now I have to read Alpha 1, and now I have to read, you know, Peter Parker number 7. I wish there was a better word for it, but I don't like them whoring him out. Like, if you have like a substantial like story and like it makes sense and they do this all the time where they just throw <laughs> everyone everywhere. If it's not done well, like it makes... The main run suck, and then it makes everything connected to it pointless and worthless. And, you know. Miles and Devil Dinosaur. You're making it insane for anyone who wants to have everything that Miles has ever been in. That's out. I would need to be a millionaire to get all the books. <laughs> all the books that he just pops in. He's just on the cover, but does he really need to be in the story? They know what they got. Night Terrors? I'm happy to see this on your list. I want to hear you. more about this. I really do because I have been avoiding it completely. <laughs> do you know who writes the Robins issue? Oh, no. 
Kenny oh, Porter. It? I did see that. I did yeah. see that. That was the only one I was willing to give a chance to, but I really want to stay away from this event completely. Let's spoil it a little bit more okay. than we're trying to right now, just so me and Pierre can just read the Robins issue. I'll start off by saying this is very much not in the same veil, but it gives off the same feeling as a Dark Knight's Metal. The doom and gloom, everything's dark. It's very much like a uh, King in Black, where it's like, the world is over because of this thing. And then it's like, mm. slowly but surely, like, no, not so much. They're figuring it out. Basically, it's very dead man heavy. Like, he's like the main. Okay. And they go into, oh, the Trinity, you know. Something's going on. Something's coming from the Justice League headquarters. Like, I feel something. And it's this whole new threat that you didn't see coming, pretty much taken over pretty quickly. It's kind of reading as like a dark Justice League book. From what I read is everyone's basically in their own nightmare. And that's what each yeah. book is, is their own mm -hmm. nightmare. Like Joker's is Batman and like himself. Between issues two and three is going to be a Satana issue because it pretty much reveals like, oh, she's doing something over here. But I'm just like, you know, building up my team kind of thing. That's where issue one leaves off. He's like kind of getting help. And who's building their team? Dead Man is gotcha. Justice League Dark team. Oh, uh, okay. So he's making a Justice League Dark team. That makes sense that they would be the ones to defeat a nightmare, right? I mean, like who else? I wonder if this is spinning out of Lazarus Planet at all. It is. Because there is Lazarus uh... Rain that they brought up, which I know nothing of that at all. Me and Pierre dove deep into that event, but I read everything possible. And then I was like, hmm. Do I need to know how it ends? You know what? I said it was a pull. It's a pass. Dimitri's switching. I feel like they're going heavy on this because that's what we're getting in the movies first. Like you're getting the horror themes, the creature commandos. All right. Well, since you gave two passes, I'll give you two passes back to back. So Thor number 33, as we know, Donny Cates left the series. We don't know why. I think he might have said something recently, but... I'm not saying they're doing a bad job trying to finish Donny Kate's story, but they've seemed to add more and more to it. And it's like, no, we just needed you to take what was there and complete it. And there seems to just be more variables being inserted into it. And it's not great to follow. And I don't love it. And I'm going to finish it out. So I would say if you didn't read it yet, just maybe don't. Isn't it kind of awful that you have to finish something out? I just would like certain parts of what was from before to be concluded and honestly I don't even know if they're going to be so I'm writing this not knowing if I'm going to get to the right location. No fault on the creative team. They're trying to clean up someone else's brain matter here. The other pass is Ewoks number one. What? You picked it up? I just read it digitally if that makes it any better but I was thinking like oh this might be cool to see like the Ewoks way of life in a sense like their perspective and it wasn't that it was telling stories around a campfire and each story was a different <laughs> artist or style and each story was ultimately pointless and on top of all of that there was no dialogue there was nothing to actually read it was all looking at and it was miniature stories within a non-story. Like, it wasn't like a main story was going on and they kept, like, telling little things that, like, kind of made sense with it. It was just campfire stories with no dialogue. <laughs> How do you follow stories that they're telling with no dialogue? Well, that Ewok hit that stormtrooper <laughs> in the head. Like, that was it. Is this a one-shot? Yeah, it's a one-shot. Okay. So, <laughs> the only thing I would say, if you're, like, a crazy Star Wars fan that's, like, ever read any novel format, I would say then, yes, give it a chance. It's a cool piece and the art is great. And like the little stories are fun. But ultimately, unless I'm missing something because I'm not a super deep Star Wars fan, it was pointless. Maybe I'm wrong. And these little stories actually like took place somewhere in between. Who knows? I've read Star Wars stories like that where it's like, oh, like, remember that bartender that was like in the movie for like three seconds? Here's his backstory. Like, I've read stuff like that and it's cool. I don't know if this was doing that or if it was just nonsense. So that's a pass for me. But if you're a heavy Star Wars fan, it's kind of cool. The art is cool and the little stories are fun, but just completely and utterly. So was that two passes? That was back to back passes. Yeah. So for my books, the ones I pulled uh, other than my Miles books, which I haven't read yet, I have Death of the Venomverse, which was amazing. From first page all the way to the end, amazing. And I'm actually hyped for the second one. Not only is it just great on the inside, but the cover art is amazing as well. I'll hold it up just to show real quick. But it gives me very much like Resident 
evil vibes. So basically, Carnage, to give you a quick synopsis, he's figured out how to multiverse travel, and he's going mm. from multiverse to multiverse, finding all Venoms and killing them. He's hunting down everyone, and there's a team of Venoms that's following him, very much like the Miles Morales movie where they're okay. trying to get Miles. It just like that, but it's a team of Venoms. And your favorite Venom is actually one of the leading team members. Uh, what's her name? Well, actually, you liked Flash right. Thompson. But it's but... like his ex-girlfriend became yes. Agent Venom, she right? took it over. Yep, Agent Venom as one of the main Venoms. And there's a few other ones that are following as well. But amazing. Just cause Carnage is just evil. And there's no one in him at this point. He's learned how to just do his fucking thing full circle here wouldn't uh black widow getting a symbiote wouldn't her taking on the mantle of agent venom have been really fucking cool yeah that would have been yeah. perfect actually and then make it more stealthy it would have been sick yeah missed opportunity there yeah i guess the book ends off with a really cool cliffhanger and the cover for issue two might give it away a little bit they did a very good job with that, and I'm definitely going to pick up the second one. So that's a pull. And Void Rivals dropped their second book. Robert Kirkman continues to pull Transformers lore into this. And it kind of is the same vibe as the first one, where you get a lot of like story of the characters and who they are, background, and it ends off with a Transformers character kind of interfering. Okay, so two pulls for you. Yeah, no, definitely a pull, at least for now. I don't want to say it yet, but it almost feels like this book is leaning heavily on that, like, to keep it going. It's like, oh, like, surprise reveal at the end. Like, it's like, oh, all right. I really hope we get more, the third issue. But I also feel like it's just building up, and there's just a lot of development that we need to put into these characters before, like, you actually care about them. And that's what I feel mm -hmm. like we're getting right now, which is fine. So I'll take it. If the title was Transformers Void Rivals and not just Void Rivals, would you feel differently? No. Okay. No, maybe. It's a very good book. I guess it's just figuring out where these people lie in that universe and why they matter to us. But uh, yeah, like I said, they're doing a good job of building them. And I'm just kind of seeing where that's going to take us. But I hope it's not just disappearances from the Transformers. I'm like, oh, here's another cameo. Here's another cameo. Like, I, I hope right. it's like... Like, right. all right, we're working with them or like something where it's like, all right, there's a reason why they're here. My theory is that this will be the first arc and the next arc will be G.I. Joe. Oh, oh. okay. That's my guess. All right. Are they only connecting those two or with, did they talk about something else going they're into They're only it? connecting those two as of now. So they also got Universal Monsters licensing. So you're talking Dracula, Werewolf think frankenstein like all that kind of stuff so yeah it could be the third arc i don't know how you wrap that in yeah the only thing i could say maybe they go through like dimensions and like accidentally get dropped in a weird world I'm like oh now we're with gi joes what the hell yeah i would have hoped that the two that are on the planet are gi joes no they have yeah, nothing no. to do with it as of right now they're aliens technically the second book definitely gives you more background on who they are and where they come from but definitely not gi joe related at least all for right. now it could end up becoming something but it just it wouldn't make sense to me all right so i'll give you my last three two of which would be pretty quick so blade first bite one through four it's actually what they're calling infinity comic they're digital only and they're short as hell and they don't scroll left to right they go down so every panel kind of connects as one long strip it's kind of cool it's a different way to do it they technically could do it with right to left pages but this is their new specific thing. So Blade First Bite, I don't know if you call it a pull, if it's digital only, it's a read, but it is Brian Edward Hill, who we did interview over a year ago, as of this week. It goes into just a little bit of where Blade's at right now, and like how he's feeling. It's like a little mini therapy session, really well done, kind of just like a teaser, because Blade number one just recently came out, which I need to pick up from the shop, need to read, and need to write to Brian Edward Hill once again to interview, because if the Blade number one book is as good as this little Infinity teaser was, very high hopes for the series. What type of overall, I don't know, what's the word I want to use, like kind of like the general feel of this book? So, like I said, this is really just a teaser of showing you where Blade's mindset is, and it kind of gives you a little recap, but it's kind of showing where, like, he doesn't know where he belongs right now. Killed vampires, worked with vampires, saved vampires, killed vampires. Like, he doesn't know what his purpose is in life. 
but some hmm. shit's going down and he once again has to just figure out the right kind of way to handle it blade battles depression that's his next arc yeah like he's going through shit but still handling shit i've never been a big blade anything i never even watched the original movies how fucked up is that how have you not you'll have a nice surprise i maybe think maybe i'll go watch them now i don't know i'm not against it don't get me wrong like it sounds when... like i've watched all vampire shit i love horror i obviously picked up a horror book today like that's the genre I love. When you see what actors are in it, you're going to be like, holy shit, I didn't know they were in this. Well, I know Ryan Reynolds is in it. There's a handful where you're just going to be like, wait a second. Like, what? I think yeah. one and two are, like, really good. Yeah, three is just okay. Is, yeah, it's just okay. My other polls, Batman Adventure Continues, is, like, on season three. I just started reading the second omnibus of season two. So this is obviously very old. But it's cool because Court of Owls are in it. Oh, Ooh. that's awesome. Animated introduction to Talon. It's done so differently. So it's like kind of reliving the first Owls. So that's kind of neat. Obviously, it's always a poll. It's kind of under the radar, I feel right now, but it's been good. Scarlet Witch number five. It's a poll, but I'm not as thrilled with the story currently. Issue five concluded Darcy's story as to why she ended up with Scarlet Witch. And really great fight scene, like the whole issue. Kind of just like, okay. Like, it just felt like a little bit of a pointless story. And now that the bad shit's up in everyone's face and then resolved, it's kind of like, okay. The issue was also drawn by Russell Dodderman rather than Bocelli. Obviously, they're, like, equally as good, but it didn't have the same feel, I guess. Pacelli really, like, puts, like, a lot of emphasis into Scarlet Witch. In this, it was kind of just didn't have the same vibe. It's interesting because yeah, the last time we talked about this, you were uh, gung-ho about it. Yeah, no, I'm still gung-ho. I'm just not content with the way they resolved this arc. Like, this arc should have been the big arc. And it's like, okay, now we're onto something new. Now we're going to go back to talking about this little necklace that stops magic. Like, now we're just going back to that in a sense. So it's still good. It's just not what I would have done. The last book that I pulled, What <laughs> If Dark Venom by Stephanie Phillips. Like, genuinely shocked by how good this book was. Not because I didn't trust that she could fucking do it but because it was just a what-if story, one shot, I just figured, all right, like, let me just pick it up because it's cool, right? But it just blew my mind. So basically, the story picks up after Battle World, where Fantastic Four is investigating what the symbiote was that Spider-Man got in the original Battle World, and it's separated from Spider-Man at this point. The thing is pissed, and he's the one that ends up getting the symbiote, which just... The combination of the two characters doesn't really seem like something that you'd be like, okay, you know, it just doesn't necessarily flow in my mind. But the mm. way it was presented when it did happen, I really wish this would be more than just this one shot because the so characters work really well together. Like he just goes down a darker path because of the influence of the symbiote. It seems like it ends off with him being a good guy, but definitely a lot darker and just I don't know, just a different vibe on him as a character. And I just, the pairing, like they could easily make this like an ultimate universe or, you know, like its own, like this is a storyline. Right. I don't want to ruin it for everyone that reads it, but I'd love to hear everyone's feedback on it because, yeah, just thinking about where this universe would go if it was a thing, accidental pun. If this was really a universe, one. I think it would throw off a lot of how things would go. So, yeah. I liked his film. design a lot from the pictures I saw. I just could have done it better because being it's Fantastic Four, like you would think his logo would have been more like without the spider, like just like the jagged straight lines. One's a four with like a spider basically around it. That's it. Right. Yeah. Then he actually turns him human at one point. So he's just walking around human. And then there's one where it's a red spider. Like a full, just a red spider. Okay. That one I didn't like so much, but I know that he's worn that in the past. So I think they were just using an older costume to show him off. I don't know. Show off his legs. And the last one is more just a Venom one. Panelist podcast. Panelist podcast. Panelist podcast. <laughs> Apple Podcast Review, reviews titled Comic Friends for Life. They wrote, I enjoy listening to their TikToks, and they seem to respond to all comments. Some of their takes are trash, 
And that's why I love them. <laughs> it would be boring if we all liked the same stuff. So that is a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Anyone who could write a better review, I will read in this podcast. Anyone who writes a worse review, I will read in this podcast. I will read all reviews is basically my point. But if you could write something equally as well done as this one. We'll read it oh. if it's five stars. 